Okay, this episode will be about um, saving images, graphics transformations like scale, rotate, and translate, as well as anti aliasing. But first, let me show you how to apply this new black theme. It's not exactly new, but I've only just found out about it. If you go on tools, options, then you can change it here. It's under environment general. Um, so, yeah, to be fair, I like this a lot better than the old one. Um, but when you do change it, it might take about between probably about two and thirty seconds, depending on your processing speed, to change it. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, but then it'll remember it next time you start it up, so that's good. Um, so we'll make a form, put a button on it, and double click the button. So that's there. Let's add a load event, although it's not strictly needed, but it's probably a bit more neater. Okay, so first let's take a graphics object like we have before, dimg as graphics. Um, and we also need to create a bitmap. This is where the image will be stored to which we'll be um, saving it. Dim b as new bitmap and then the parameters are the x and y. Uh, I think if you do file name it gets, I don't know. I'm just, I don't want to guess it and get it wrong. Uh, I've only ever used. Go down. This. Uh, no. Wait. We. Where is it? Width and height. Wherever that was. Anyway. Um. So I'm gonna say a hundred by a hundred image. So hundred in the x dimension, hundred in the y dimension. Now we need to set up the graphics object. So g is equal to. Now what we're actually doing here is we're setting up the graphics object to not write to the screen but we're actually drawing to the uh, bitmap instead so you do g equals graphics dot from image and then you pass in the uh, bitmap that you want to draw to. Um, next when you click it and again this could have been on the same line it's just I guess if you're in a it's a bit neater anyway to do it this way. It's a bit dodgy putting it on the same as the same one that writes it. Um so in button one click we will draw it. So you do all your drawing everything the same as if you were like you would before. So brackets draw line brackets uh colour dot blue uh comma now if it as it's hundred by hundred canvas, I'm gonna go it from coordinates ten ten to ninety ninety. So it should have a border around it. Uh I think it's pens blue. Pens blue. Like that. Um next all you need to do is do B dot save. It's pretty simple actually. Uh so I'm just gonna do the directory I've got set up. Uh Uh, line, line. Now do dot png. That seems to be work the best for me. JPEG isn't strictly a JPEG because it doesn't actually um do any compression on it. Um, bitmap doesn't seem to open with certain things, but if you do the PNG, it seems to work fine with everything. So always do PNG unless you know any other way of converting it or something. But yeah. Uh, so let's run this. So if I run it, you won't see anything happen. But if I go to the folder, speed tutorials, you now see the line in there, which I promise you wasn't there. In fact, I can delete it if I want to show you. The YouTube's in there for later on in the episode. If I pre press the button, you can see it just appears there. So that's the line, and you can see it's actually got an opaque background. And hope you don't open it in Photoshop. Okay, good. Um, yeah. So. Later on in the episode, we'll get on to anti-aliasing, which will get rid of this jagged effect. It'll make it smooth. Um, but that's the last thing I'm going to do in the episode. That's what this YouTube blog is for. Um, so next, I'm going to show you graph, well, graphics transformations. So I'm going to get rid of this bitmap. I'm just going to do drawing. So I'm going to draw to. Um, let's get a panel. That seems to be the typical thing I usually draw to. Is there a border style? Uh, yeah, there is. 3D, just so you can see it. Um, 
Yeah, so let's set it up is equal to panel one dot create graphics. Um so let's make some like movement ones. So button two can go here. Um so this is gonna go left and this is gonna go right. So first I'm gonna show you how to um translate, which is basically moving it. Uh let's get the paint event just to keep it all updated. So just keep it stripped down as simple as I can. Uh so this is the left and this is right. Um <laughs> Okay, so let me run that and you should see the rectangle appear in that box, like so. Uh, so now let's do the transformations. So left, I'm going to do G dot uh, translate transform. And then, so if you want to move it in the X, I'm only going to do X, but if you want to do the Y, it's the second parameter. So the X, say minus 5, uh, that should be right, and 0. So I'm going to keep it the same height. As for going right, it, this should be plus five. I'm pretty sure that's the right way around. So left, yep, and I need to clear it. Um, so let me just clear the screen. Um, G dot clear back color. Let's try that. So you can see there, I'm translating the. Um, the block left and right, um, and if I want to do, I'll do both of them. So it's going to go diagonally now. So this should work, as you can see there. So that's how that can work. Next, let's do uh, rotations. Um, so G dot rotate. This should only have one parameter. Um, and then rotate. Um, so it works just the same as you would expect. Uh, the left and right should really be clockwise and anti-clockwise, but let's try this. Okay, so it's pivoting around the um, the center coordinate. Um, there is a way of fixing that. Uh, I might as well show you. So what to fix this you need to um you translate the coordinate axes so do translate transform you translate it to the point the corner of the object in fact no i'm going to do it uh 10 so it's going to actually rotate it and keep it perfectly still um you translate it, you rotate it, then you untranslate it, if that makes sense. Um, so same thing here, thing here. Uh, just gonna get that minus, and this should work. So basically, when these transformations, they don't as such move the object; they more like draw the drawing axis axes. So you might have thought that this is wrong. You might think, oh, I want to move it back to the center, rotate it and push it back. But no, actually you're moving the drawing axis to the object, rotating it and moving the axis back. So that's why it's plus here and I didn't actually rotate it. So this should now work and it's rotating around one place. This is in um, degrees, not radians. So. I've got to do, you know, quite a lot of clicks, but you can see it does perfectly line up because it's in degrees and rather than radians. Um, so that works. Next, I'll show you how to do scaling. Um, so you do scale, transform, and then 
you've got to have an extra parameter here scale transform extra parameter now for scaling you should always have the parameters you can't have a scale factor of zero that just like kind of, it's like it not being there if you want to keep it the same keep it as one first parameter scales in the x the second parameter scales in the y so this I'm going to do uh, for scaling you don't do 5 and minus 5 we'll do 2 you're times it by 2 in order to double the width so in order to half the width you need to divide it by 2 so it's a half so whatever you scale by here you need to, to wanna, if you want to unscale you have to do 1 by that so it's the reciprocal um, so right and you can see it's scaling the uh, the labels on the um, things you really need to change if you're wondering why it's not very responsive it's because I need to call if I get rid of this I need to call this because it's only updating when my mouse moves out of the box or when it's called again this should make it uh, responsive instantly like so um, so there are all the three transformations. If you wish to reflect it, you do a negative um, scale and that would flip it. Not that a rectangle would matter, but if you have an image then that's how you would reflect it. Okay, so finally, uh, anti-aliasing. Uh, anti-aliasing is where you make the image smooth by... Um, I can show you actually um, basically makes it a gradient fade out rather than just pixel 100% opacity to zero it goes like 100 to 60 to 20 to nothing kind of like gradual fade um, so in the setup of the object so for um, shape anti aliasing I think that's how it's spelled shape anti aliasing you do g dot uh, smooth mode is equal to so that's how you do shape anti aliasing um, you should even see a difference see how the box is actually faded out so if I was to draw a line here so line Okay, so that's going to draw a line, and you can see that the line has been smoothed out, as it were. Um, so it's not jagged. If I was to, in fact, let me turn this anti aliasing on here and then turn it off here. That might even do it higher. Uh, yeah so you can see the top line is kind of smooth and then the bottom line is a bit jagged um, it's kind of hard to show but it is just a little bit different uh, as for text anti-aliasing I'm not going to give you an example but just trust me this works text anti um, you do g dot text rendering hint is equal to um, anti-alias so that's how you anti-alias text for image anti-aliasing image anti-aliasing uh, g dot interpolation mode and then you need uh, this one so yeah there are your three anti-aliasing so shape text image